Fifi Mangaka here. Have you ever cracked open a new manga or comic and suddenly glazed over the text as the author aggressively lore dumped and shoved like 20 characters in your face all in the first chapter? Did you even remember it all? Or did you just get frustrated and throw the comic in the bin of comics you'll never pick up again? Well, it's not only you, because the average reader only remembers about 20% of what they read compared to a staggering 80% of what they see. For every 100 words you write, a reader will only remember 20 of them. It's a startling revelation that demonstrates the incredible impact of show don't tell in the world of writing and storytelling. And as a storyteller, whether you're making a manga, a webcomic, or a novel, you need to harness that impact. So today we're gonna dive into the art and power of show don't tell to help you create an engaging story that your audience will remember regardless of word count. And we're gonna highlight three major things that a lot of beginner story creators get wrong. The monologue pitfall. One common mistake that storytellers make is explaining everything to the reader. From a character's identity to the significance of certain objects, even the most obvious reactions are spoon-fed to the audience. By relying on excessive narration, this approach ignores the power of dialogue. Instead of allowing characters to engage in meaningful conversations that inform the reader with what they say, the narrator serves as an annoying information dispenser. Sometimes even characters take the place of the narrator. Not only does this bore the reader, but important details may also be lost in the process because a reader may skip over it. For instance, let's consider a scenario where we have a protagonist that needs to cross a river that's blocking their path. The protagonist possesses something, I don't know, we'll call it an aquasite gem or something, an ore that allows them to walk on water. A bad example of falling into the monologue pitfall would be narrator. Protagonist has the ability to walk on water due to the aquasite gem that his mother wore during his birth. The magic energy in this gem is now in him. Here, the narrator is talking at us rather than allowing the protagonist or the situation to show us how he will cross this river. This can almost feel like a lecture and we're here to be entertained, not to read a textbook. In a good example, the character could briefly mention their ability to effortlessly traverse rivers thanks to the aquasite gem. By showing rather than telling, the reader can deduce the character's extraordinary skill without being overwhelmed by unnecessary exposition. Protagonist. Without this aquasite gem, I wouldn't be able to cross this troublesome river. And you, as a mangaka, or the author, illustrate Pratag using his ability to cross the river. If you're finding this video on showing, not telling helpful, or you're just loving the speed paint of my character Koshi from my manga Yol Treehouse, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, where you talk about lore, character design, and tons of other world building stuff while I build my own manga out. Okay, let's keep going. Next in pitfalls, we have the dreaded graduation walk. Here, we overwhelm the reader with a barrage of new characters introduced in just a few chapters. It's akin to high school graduation, where names are called out one after another. But excruciatingly so, this influx of characters often fails to establish their relevance to the current situation. To make matters worse, weak character designs can make it difficult to differentiate their personalities or distinguish them visually. By weak designs, I don't mean that they're not visually striking, but the characters lack strong characterization. You can't discern their personalities or tell them apart. To address this issue, storytellers, particularly those writing comics, should consider the necessity of each character's presence in a particular scene. Is it possible to demonstrate their relevance without quite literally drawing them? If they do need to be present, can their actions and interactions speak volumes about their importance? Also, when you absolutely must have a bunch of characters introduced in one chapter, consider against providing detailed introductions in character boxes or lengthy paragraphs to describe them. Instead, let their actions make their mark and leave an impression on the reader. All right, one of the most difficult habits to break out of and one of the most pivotal mistakes in storytelling, lore dumping. We're on to the lore compost. This is something I've seen, and I'm sure you've seen it too, in a lot of indie comics, novels, and manga, and even non-independent works too. We're all guilty of it, regardless of the medium. I know we all spend a ton of time building our worlds, crafting characters, and creating an immersive as experience as you could possibly get from paper and ink. I know there may be a part of you that might even be afraid that no one will care enough about your work to get to all of the amazing lore that you've created. So you dump it all in the exposition of the story, 
bad idea. A reader who's new to your story hasn't spent months or years submerged in your tale like you have. Their eyes are a fresh perspective, a tabula rasa. Approach your writing with that consideration. They don't know anything, and they probably don't care. Yet, consider the art of show don't tell as your secret weapon that will keep readers hooked and wanting more. Sprinkle subtle hints, whispers, and symbols across your panels. Allow your readers to connect the dots and feel the thrill of discovery as they unravel the deeper layers in your world. Remember, a well-placed breadcrumb can ignite their curiosity and create a sense of wonder that will get them past that first chapter and hungry for more adventure. For example, let's say your world is filled with ancient prophecies and the main character is a future teller. A future teller, we'll call that a person who deciphers prophecies and makes the common man aware of things that will happen in the future. Rather than burdening your readers at the beginning of the story with lengthy explanations about prophecies, what future tellers are and how they came to be on the world, reveal the existence of prophecies through cryptic symbols etched into walls of a forgotten temple. Or have a mysterious seer drop enigmatic hints that leave your characters and your readers so utterly curious about their meaning. By sowing the seeds of intrigue, you invite your audience to participate actively in the unraveling of your lore. Ultimately, what showing and not telling means is that your readers experience the story through the lens of your characters. It's your character's experience, interactions, and emotions that illuminate the multifaceted world that you've created. Inoue Takehiko, creator of Slam Dunk and Vagabond, once said in an interview that he comes up with stories because he treats storytelling like a documentary. He is the cameraman filming the world of his characters and lets their experiences guide the story forward. And that, my friends, is the true essence of Show Don't Tell. If you liked this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll keep talking about lore and world building and story tips as I build my own manga Yul Treehouse, and I'll see you next time. Bye.